Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one that I'm super, super, super excited about. It is part of the Chic for Cheap craft challenge for March. And this is being hosted by Christy from Christy Creates and co-hosted by Anna Lee from Anna Lee Ashby DIY. And guys, I love both of these people so, so much. Their videos are awesome. They're like the sweetest humans ever. And I have been watching this challenge for a really long time. Well, since it started <laughs> and I'm really excited to participate. So this challenge is just taking something that you found for expensive online and making it yourself. So I love doing this kind of thing. This is like my goal for my home to be all things that look really awesome that I spent almost nothing on. So like I said, just super, super excited to be participating in this. Playlist below, their channels below, let's get to it. <laughs> So this is what I am going to be recreating today. Now, I am not going to be making a pillow because I just have too many pillows in my life. I am actually going to be taking this sign that was originally $19.99 at Michael's and I got it for $4, $4 y'all. Uh, after season, I picked up two of these. I love the way that they look and I figured I could take off this paper pretty easily. That wasn't the case. <laughs> so um, this was a struggle. I probably should have heat gunned it or something, but I found that if I just kind of rolled it with my fingers like I'm doing right here, then I could get most of this paper off. It was like a weird, almost like paper mache-ish kind of paper. I don't really know what kind of paper this was, but it was really annoying. And you can see I'm like pushing my pad across the table. <laughs> so I kind of gave up on that after a while. And I got this razor from my dad's garage. And I know they sell these at Dollar Tree. Uh, this is just kind of what I had on hand. And I just kind of started scraping the rest of the glue and the paper off of this. Honestly, this took me a lot longer than I wanted it to, and I was just not very happy about, I don't know, I thought this was going to be a lot easier than it was. So I only have the patience to do things that I want to do, and this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed scraping this off because it's something I've never done before, so it was really satisfying to see everything coming off of this wood, but I did end up like chipping it not like, like chipping it but like digging into the wood in certain places um so i don't know if there's a technique i'm missing on this let me know after i did that i did sand it down um but i got real impatient and stopped doing that so i'm using this white chalk paint by folk art it's the uh white anirondack and Am I just not putting enough paint on? I was expecting like a lot better coverage. Maybe I should have sanded down the red a little bit more, but I ended up having to do, I think, three coats with the white anirondack. Um, I used my heat gun in between. And I don't know, I just thought it would cover a lot better than it did. Um, but I'm painting the whole thing, the back sides, everything, um, with the white anirondack and then I'm coming back in with my green. So I'm using um, a mix of the white anirondack and then this green uh, acrylic paint that I got from the Dollar Tree. Once again, not a super fan of the green, but mixed with this chalk paint, it actually covered really well. I ended up doing two coats of this. Um, also, please tell me what you stir your paint with because I haven't found something good. <laughs> I'm using the end of a paint stick again. Like, it, it took me forever. Um, also, I did not wipe off my paintbrush between doing the white and the green. So this first coat is kind of a mixture. <laughs> I did uh, wipe off my paintbrush after this coat. Haha, <laughs> smart Erin. Um, but I would highly recommend that. You're probably smart enough to know that, but I was just rushing. <laughs> So I did about three coats of that green and now I am going to be working on the stripes on the side and the bottom. So I got this tip from watching, um, I think it's Crafting with Maria 
love her. She uses washi tape to do her stripes and all of her stuff is beautiful. So I was like, I can do this. So difference between her stuff and my stuff is that uh, she normally does this on a flat surface. So it probably works a lot better. <laughs> um, I had a little bit of a difficult time putting these on with the lip, but I still think they turned out relatively straight. We're going to go with it. <laughs> so what I did is I put that first piece down flush with the edge, and then I put a second piece in between, a third piece next to it. Now, once I get this third piece down, you're going to see that I'm going to take off that middle piece and that's where I'm going to paint. See? So it makes it nice and even. Now this middle stripe, since it's supposed to be a little bit wider, I honestly just kind of went for it. <laughs> um, it's a little crooked, but that's okay. Can't really tell all that much in the end. And then I did the third stripe the same way I did the first one with the piece in the middle. And then um, I put down the, the outside piece after that. Um, and once again, it's a little, I had a difficult time getting these straight. No one's just a little crooked too, but that's okay. This is crafting. It's not fine art that's going up in a gallery somewhere. <laughs> so to paint these stripes, um, to look like the pillow, I took the green that I used earlier. I saved this by putting plaster cap on it so I could use it for the whole project. And I put this in my little paint tray from Dollar Tree. And then I took a little bit more of the white Anirondack and I mixed that in. So it would be uh, the same hue, but just a lighter color. So once again, I'm just using whatever to stir it, like a random, I think I used the other end of the paintbrush that I used to stir earlier to stir this paint. So once again, if you guys have any tips on how the heck to stir paint in a better way, please let me know. Um, so for these stripes, I ended up doing two coats and then taking that washi tape off. And then I ended up doing the same exact process for the bottom. So look how satisfying this is though. Like look at those stripes. Like I still love looking at this. <laughs> so you can see here, I did the top and the bottom and then I painted a lighter color on those center ones there in the center. I think I would like them a little bit darker, but I'm going with it. So I'm using this wall cling set that I got from Dollar Tree with the gnomes and I am cutting out this shamrock because the girl was not about to freehand a tiny shamrock. Sorry, I am not a good freehander. It's not within my skill sets. I'm aware of this, but this one fit perfectly, absolutely perfectly. And it almost matched the same color. So I'm using my matte Mod Podge that I got from Dollar Tree. And I am just putting some on the back. I put way, way too much on. So here you can see I'm like kind of wiping it off onto my mat. <laughs> and then I just stuck that on there. Nice thing about this is I, I was able to move it so that it fit perfectly. And then I just took some a little bit more matte Mod Podge and put that right over it to give it a little bit of more of a matte finish. It is sparkly still, but I don't know. I feel like it took a little bit of the sparkle away, a little bit more professional. Um, so there you can see I am using a stencil that I made with my Cricut and I'm using hot pink vinyl because I don't use hot pink vinyl very much in my life and I had it in a set. So this is my stencil vinyl. <laughs> I just got a kit offline and it came with some colors that I hated. So not that I hate hot pink. I don't. <laughs> so I just put this on there around about where I thought it would go based off of the picture of the pillow and saving my transfer paper because that can be used again and that stuff's expensive. <laughs> and now after I get that stuck on there, I'm using the white end around again. And I'm just, I think I did three coats of the white end around deck on here just to get like a really good coverage and cover up all of that green. Now, tell me if I'm the only one that finds this. My white anorotic was like cracking. Like, is this a chalk paint thing? I am new to chalk paint. Does anyone else like what? What am I missing? What did I do wrong that it started kind of cracking on the top? Is that just a thing that it does? I don't know. So I did three coats on that and then I peeled the stencil off and 
it was actually it actually came off super easy and you can't really tell at least i don't think you can really tell but it did bleed the littlest bit oh <laughs> yeah i lent my cricut tools to my fiance for a wedding project so now i am stuck using this overly large box cutter ha <laughs> that was fun um but I put my white and on octane back in there because I do not waste paint. <sighs> that is a terrible thing, wasting paint. And I ended up just having to fix up um, some of the bleed on here. It was hardly noticeable, but it was bothering me. So I think it took like 20 minutes <laughs> and the tiniest brush that I had to fix this up. It was really nice because the chalk paint was raised so I could kind of go along those lines a little bit easier without going over the white. So, um, little, little blessings, I guess. <laughs> but I love how this looks. So I'm super excited. So last thing I had to do for this project was move the, um, the hanger on the back. I know this has a name and I'm blanking on it right now, the kind of hanger that it is. So I needed to move it to the other side. So I just took my measuring tape and just kind of found center and then decided that I didn't think that was center. So I kept moving it around, even though that really is center. Um, I took a pen and just kind of drew out the holes so that I could remove the tape and then just kind of drill this back in and feel good about it. Didn't even use the holes, decided to move it again. So eh, don't even know why I decided to do that for myself. But this was actually really easy to move. I was very surprised uh, by how easy this was to move. And I think you can get little um, little screwdrivers like this at Dollar Tree. So this was just another thing that I stole from my dad's garage. <laughs> but I was generally surprised at how easy these were, were to screw back in. And I, I just love how this turned out, guys. Obsessed. So I really hope that you guys like it. It is hanging in my parents' entryway. And I just think it looks, it looks like a really good dupe to me, not tuning my own horn, but I'm obsessed guys. I love St. Patrick's Day and this just feels like a really adult St. Patrick's thing to have hanging up. So I just really like it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Check out the playlist with all of the other awesome she for sheep, she cheek for cheap. I have a really hard time saying that ideas below and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.